Football is still the topic on the Sports Mag Zone. The Ryan nephew Jamaica Premier League continuing its road to the playoffs on Sunday as match week 19 takes center stage. Now with the best teams in the country jostling for positions, let's now have a look at how the table is shaping up. Cavalier, the leader, is at the moment on 40 points. They're just one ahead of the champions, Mount Pleasant, and just three in front of third place, Tivoli Gardens. Portmore United, seven-time champions, are just four points off the lead in fourth. Arnett Garns right there as well on 34 points. Waterhouse uh, some distance back. That's eight points adrift of Arnett Garns in sixth position. Uh, Dunbar Holden, Montego Bay United, the team's closest to the playoff spots at seven and eight. And Treasure Beach and Limehole, um, bottom of the barrel, as they have been for most of the season. So... Let's look at the fixtures for Sunday coming up. Live on Sportsmax, Limehole Academy against Dunbar Holden. Mount Pleasant against Tivoli Gardens. That's going to be a big one. And the other games fixtured for the weekend, Portmore United against Harbourview. Humberland, Montego Bay United. Treasure Beach taking on Malines United. Waterhouse and Arnett Gardens battling. And Cavalier taking on Veer United as well. An obvious standout clash is the featured game on Sportsmax where second place Mount Pleasant will host third place Tivoli at Draxhall Sports Complex joining us to break down this clash and more our in-house football analyst Leger Williams that's going to be a big one Leger my producer has asked me to question you about your choice of, of, of gear because you've come here to talk about football and you're wearing a, a cricket jersey yeah you know um, people may know me as a prediction guru for football but I have to let the, the people at home know you all know even the producer know as well that I'm a multi-sport guy, so you know, I just decided to show up in some, you know, Windy's gear as well, to, you know, to just show the people. All right, all right sir. Uh, continue on your foot on your football assignment now. So uh, this 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 Mount Pleasant Tivoli clash on Sunday is going to be a big one. Both teams playing well, um, and the Tivoli looking strong. Yeah, this 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 is uh, so far in the season. I think you yes. know we've seen the first round of fixtures with. Everyone playing each other, but I think now as we go down to the real business end of it, heading to playoffs, I think this can be a real psychological battle in terms of what we expect to see in the playoffs. And I think so far this might be the biggest battle that we've seen so far this season, I think at very least. I think if a Tivoli team were able to go to Draxall in front of the Mount Pleasant support and get a result there, whether it be a draw or a win, especially a win, I think psychologically they would really dent the psyche of some of the bigger teams. We already saw what they did against Arnett Gardens a few weeks back with their come from behind win. So I do think that this Tivoli team, they're, they're cooking on some serious smoke right now. And I do think that if they were to get this result, uh, more heads would be turned, so to say. Yeah. A couple of things to look at here, Lish, because when they had met in the first round in November, Mount Pleasant won the game by one, one goal, goal to nil. nil. Kimone Bailey was the goal scorer. He has had some injury issues and hasn't played a lot since. Well, he certainly hasn't scored any goals since that November 23 winner that he scored against Tivoli. He's back now. How fit he, is he and how much will Mount Pleasant depend on Kimone Bailey being on song to take care of Tivoli? Well, I mean, the good thing for Mount Pleasant is that, well, we know about the the riches in squad yeah. that Mount Pleasant have. So they have so many good players, and especially in the wing areas, they have more than enough coverage to really account for the absence of Bailey, and they have been doing so. You know, But I've been on record saying from even when Kimoni Bailey was catching the eyes of everyone else, I'm not saying that he wasn't playing well. Of course, he was playing brilliantly. But I do think that Devante Campbell was a standout player for me, and he's continued to be so. I think even in the example that we saw in the Harbourview game where he was a catalyst yes. for Mount Pleasant coming from behind and you know he got that trial at Charlton as well so I do think that Devante Campbell has been probably a top three player in the league this season and when it comes on to Mount Pleasant um, he's just been fantastic but in terms of Kimone Bailey you know they've had the luxury of giving him his time to come back and ease his way into the squad They've changed up a few things tactically as well, and they've brought in some more players. We're seeing now um, Ouvre or Avre from Trinidad and Tobago. He has come in. He's one of the most deceptive 1v1 players in the league now as well. Green, who they have brought back into the fold, can play on either flank as well. So they're really, I don't think they're short of attacking quality. 
So I think Kimoni Bailey's role in this squad will really be to give that extra energy when they're getting into the playoff time. I'm not sure how much of an impact he'll have in this game in particular. Let me ask you this. Tim only comes in this match on a winning streak of four, four straight games. They win 70% of their away games, but Mount Pleasant wins 70% of their home games. Who has the advantage in terms of those stats that, we, that I just gave you? Well, I mean, based on the stats that you gave, I guess you can say that there is no advantage <laughs> per se. <laughs> but um, I, I do think that this game is extremely tight. Nonetheless, um, both of these teams are playing the two best brands of football in the league so far this season, for sure. Um, I, I think they've been the two most consistent teams uh, apart from, you know, Cavalier and Portmore have been really good as well, both on 11 games without having a loss. So I can't discount them, but for, for like the eye test and even going after results as well, I do think that Mount Pleasant and Tivoli have been extremely impressive this season and they're obviously up there with the favourites. So I think this game is going to be extremely tight, especially in the midfield areas. Even though these two teams are experts at scoring, we saw what happened in the first game where it was only decided by one goal. So I think that shows how important the midfield battle is going to be in this one and how important substitutes may be as well. So, yeah, really, really tight game I'm expecting. Yeah, you know what? You just referenced the, the first match between them as, as well. But that game happened at a time when Mount Pleasant had started the season with a six-game winning streak and hardly gave up goals. I mm -hmm. think they had given up just one goal in their first six matches. But if you look at their recent form, they're giving up goals a lot more now. And Tivoli have, have improved. I'm saying that to say that if I analyze it that way, Tivoli may have the edge going in because Tivoli, I think, is better now than they were in November. And Mount Pleasant were looking better in November than they are looking now. Statistically, at least. Okay, statistically, I would say yes, in terms of a Mount Pleasant point. Tivoli are 100% better now than they were because um, Coach Waite has been working with these players and, you know, it's the same players, plus he's brought in some of his yeah. older players from the Arnett days, and they've had a huge impact. We saw what Steve Clark did, in, um, especially. So I think this Tivoli team is getting better and better. But although Mount Pleasant, you know, maybe to the statistical eye, they won't seem like they're improving, but they've made some tweaks, especially tactically. And I do think that it's going to serve them even better as the season winds down. You know, where they, they've even more gone into the continental style of things. And I mentioned Devante Campbell and especially Avery as well. Their, their new system, well, I don't want to say it's new because they've been doing shades of this for quite some time, but what they do now is isolate their wingers much more because of the, the interior ability and quality that they have. We're especially seeing even their deeper players, maybe a Demario Phillips dropping deeper. We've seen Daniel Green in those interior areas getting on the ball much more so. And then at the end of it, I said that they have probably the two deadliest 1v1 players in the league. So. If you're going to continue to isolate those players, and not to mention that Devante Campbell, who I think is this good, was absent from the team for some time for his trial at Charlton. So I'm saying all of this to say is I think that Mount Pleasant are still the best team in the league, despite being a, a point or two off the top. And I think as we go into the playoff you know, places and the push towards the playoff time, they'll even start to show even more how good they are, just like they did last and year. Let me just interrupt you, interject here for one second. And remember, in November, it was when Wade came in, just came in in November. So he, he had not a chance to imprint his own... Yeah, well, it took time. Yeah, it took time, time yeah. on the team yet. Yeah. So, you know, that one little win might have been like a false dawning sense of where Mount Pleasant could be in terms of your matchup against Tivoli. Yeah. But yeah, now, could... now that he's had few months under his belt, it might be a different dynamic. Well, you can see that the yeah. Tivoli team is now warming under Jerome Waite's guidance. Uh, move quickly, Calvi, um, Lish, to the Waterhouse Arnett clash because that's another big clash. Very disappointing Waterhouse. Uh, they haven't had back to back wins in the league since late October going into November. They win, they draw, they lose, they, they, they are not developing any consistency. With, with you know with back-to-back -back wins or a, or, a, or a winning streak which is very uncharacteristic for Waterhouse whether they are league leaders or top two or top three they usually have seasons where at least for a period they're showing some steadiness but given their up and down form you would have to take Arnett to beat them then yeah I wouldn't be surprised if Arnett went to Waterhouse and got the result but that, that's also a very close one because if you look at Arnett's results, usually when they come up against the top, other top six teams, they tend to lose and they tend to struggle. Apart from a couple of, you know, 
false results may come down to because they did well against Mount Pleasant, I believe, earlier in the season. So this Arnett team is still very young, still very inconsistent as well. But to your point, yes, Waterhouse have been extremely con inconsistent this season. And they, they're caught up in a battle now with, I think, them, um, Mobe United and, you know, some other teams. Dumbo in Holding. Dumbo Holding as yeah. well, in and around to get that sixth spot. And that's going to be extremely tight. I think that, that might be even more entertaining, as it usually is, actually, yeah. than the, to, to get the top two race. And, yeah, I, I think, yeah, that's going to be a close game. Mobe United, I, I think, so far, especially the past couple of weeks, they've been looked the strongest coming up, so I wouldn't be surprised if they squeeze in. Dumbo holding extremely inconsistent as well, so all three teams, I think, have the quality to get into the top six. It's just whether or not who's going to hit for him at this pivotal time right now. Yeah. A quick comment on, on Humberland. Andrew Price lost the job as the coach of Humberland, having lost four of nine matches. Vassal Reynolds took over. He has now lost six of nine. Um, what's happening at Humberland? Well, <laughs> uh, from what we saw, uh, I've seen enough of Vassal Reynolds coaching to know that this isn't necessarily a problem of his because I've seen him be able to set up a defence to a really top, top standard in schoolboy football and in the league as well. Yeah. But I have to say that the standard of defending that we've seen since he's taken over has been absolutely deplorable. I'm not going to you know, beat around my words. It's been really bad, but it has to be said that he came in mid-season, probably hasn't gotten the players that he has wanted, but then again, you have to question it because this Humberland team historically has been so good defensively. So what has caused the struggle at first, Andrew Price and then Vassarin also not be able to eke out that defensive quality or the grit that they usually have. So, you know, it's, it's a sticky one. I'm, I'm not going to beat a coach that I know is a quality one, but I think defensively is the reason why they haven't improved so far under Vassarin and maybe once he has a sum of more players to bring in, then we'll see an improvement there. OK, well, let's see what happens there. The Real Nevia Jamaica Premier League continuing this weekend and lots of the action coming up on Sportsmax on Sunday evening, including that big match at Drax Hall between Mount Pleasant and Tivoli. You can't miss it. We go to break. We'll be back with more on The Zone after this.